Hello, multi multinational machinations. And thank you to Denev for that malt mention. Thank you to Denev and welcome malt mates and whiskey enthusiasts from all around the world and beyond to Ralphie Review 900. <sighs> With such a, um, a round number of whiskey review as 900 is, I feel sort of duty bound to um, review a very prominent single malt which has received a mixed reception out in the whisky world and it's Glenallachy 15 year old and this whisky was launched probably about a year ago now in fact several years ago and uh, shortly after it was launched I bought a bottle um, in fact I bought two bottles one to keep for the future and one to open and drink and I opened this bottle I had a smell and a taste and then I just put the cork back in the bottle put it in the shelf in my stash cupboard and left it for another couple of months. My first impression of this single malt was not very favourable. However, over time I have grown to appreciate it because I've just taken my time with it and exercised something that we all need to do to, to understand whiskey and that's patience. It's exercising some patience. You will have the same experience yourself at some point on your whiskey journey, on your spirits journey. It could be scotch whiskey, it could be bourbon, rye, rum, whatever. You'll open a bottle, you'll smell it, you'll taste it in the glass and you'll think, no. I'm not ready for this. This isn't working for me. I'm not particularly enjoying it. I'm going to put it away in the cupboard for a few months and I'll come back to it later. After all, it's alcohol. It's got an indefinite shelf life. It's one of the longest surviving consumable human commodities in existence. They've actually found traces of wine in Egyptian pyramids, in, sorry, in Egyptian tombs, because the pyramids are not actually tombs. Wonderfully raisin, with some fig and dates, and a little bit of chocolatiness. This is the 15 year old, and um, from the Valley of the Rocks, that's what it says, Glen Alachy, it's the interpretation. Uh, natural colour on the front label, non-chill filtered on the front label, an age statement, yeah, 46% vo by volume alcohol, yep, this is an integrity bottling and it's coming from a distillery which was just a few years ago bought over by the whisky impresario Billy Walker who really has a very good instinct for the way business is going and the demand for whiskey. He, he really has it spot on. And this comes from being a pretty sharp cookie and having decades and decades of experience in the industry at a fairly high level. So he's got that overview and he's able to plan because he can take what's happened in the past and project it through the present into the future and get it right and he understands and there's other distilleries out there don't seem to understand this yet well not the senior decision makers that if you actually spend money in good quality casks you can take an average distillery signature and you can make it something special particularly when you give it an integrity presentation frankly it's not rocket science Springbank have been doing it from the very start and therefore, it makes them in a better position to, to, to survive and cope with future downturns and demand, which aren't that far away now. So I've given it a few minutes in the glass to settle down. I'm going to nose it neat and sip it neat and give you an introduction before I add probably quite a significant amount of water. But I'll explain the reason for that shortly. Wonderfully spicy really good sound sherry casks in here. It's not just sherry casks, I think there's some pork casks as well. 
There's been a balance of casks going on and I think a formula is used which is sympathetic to the age of the whisky. Now I don't know exactly what formula that is and I'm sure Billy is not going to be telling anybody anytime soon. But that's real life. Hey, it's business. Taste. Quite nippy. In fact, slightly hot. That heat is not coming from the casks. It's coming from the spirit. You can really feel it at the back of your throat in the finish. It burns the back of your throat. So this is not cleanly made spirit. But that's nothing to do with the current owners of the distillery and everything to do with the previous owners of the distillery. Um, the casks, the combination of casks, are really working well together. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> it's the hot, li slightly hot liquor thing. Once you taste it, you'll never forget it. You'll always recognise it when you come across it. And it's, it's really overcoating the spirit very well. But initially this causes a bit of frustration because you're not getting a balanced whiskey, particularly when you first open the bottle and first taste it. Now I know that this is one particular batch of the 15 year old and other subsequent batches have, more recent batches have been significantly improved. But I'm, re I'm assessing, I bought this, so I'm reviewing this, end of. And by the way, I'm a huge fan of Glenallachy and I support what they're doing. Simples. Taste. Neat. Quite intense, coming from the cask. Chocolatey, spice. Slight wine notes, port notes and sherry. Maybe some Madeira in there, just to kind of dry off the sweetness. Just round things off. And the signature of Glenallachy itself is not particularly prominent. Why is this? Because it's not really showing yet. I've got to add water to this. Now when I add water, I am diluting this liquor significantly. 5 millilitres, 10 millilitres, 15 millilitres, 4 teaspoonfuls of water. I can hear you, I can hear you already. Ralphie, you're drowning it, that's unprecedented. I know you're a big water splasher into your whiskey, but this is going OTT. Yeah, but there's a reason I'm doing this, because the best way to tame down hot liquor, hot spirit, is to dilute it. And just to remind you, sure I've added a lot of water, but I don't add half as much as master blenders do to cask samples before they nose them and appraise them and rate them and select them. They cut whiskey way, way down. Ask them. Visit them and ask them or message them. They'll tell you. Another thing with adding more water, it speeds up the changes by softening the impact of the cask through the dilution and helping to restore some sort of balance between the spirit influence and the cask influence. So we've got strong, intense cask influence going on, really good quality, fresh casks, five star casks, but you've got this spirit behind it which isn't particularly strong profiled. Glenallachy when you look up the records in the archives, you'll find was always intended to be a blending whiskey because it has a soft Speyside character. It is not heavy character like its neighbours, Glenfarclas, just along the road. One reason is because Glenfarclas direct fired the stills. Now, if Glenallachy were to direct fire their stills and replace their their cooling sleeves with warm tubs, then they'd take the distillery to a whole new level. But we'll wait and see. The nose is a lot softer. And that's a good thing because you're not getting the overwhelming presence of the casks. They're far more subdued. And also the 
signature that you expect from Glenallachy. Slightly appley, soft, a bit of bananas, mild apricot, gentle, unassuming, soft Speyside style. It's, it's something coming through. It's re-exerting itself and doing so successfully. Tasting. Much more languid and expressive on the arrival. After all that water, there's still loads and loads of flavour in the palate for the simple reason that this is a concentrated whisky. So the flavour's all quite compressed because there's so much flavour being added in there to create this whisky, to structure this whisky. And by adding lots of water, you you get you weaken it to access the to decompress the flavour. It's just like adding water to orange squash, orange juice, concentrated orange juice, or lemon juice, or barley water. You add the water, and then it's simply more palatable. It's more consumable, and that's exactly what we're doing here, albeit on a smaller scale. Lovely to see that. Um, anyway, I hold it up to the little. The that's gone into gone into focus now. Wonderful. A um, little bit of Scotch mist appearing, so confirming that it's unchill filtered, and particularly in a cold environment, um, you'll notice the Scotch mist much more than if you're drinking your whiskey in a warm environment, where it takes that much longer to go a little bit cloudy, if at all. Temperature's got a lot to do with it, you know. The quality of the sherry casks in particular is really popping. Cherry notes from what I perceive to be port casks. Super rich raisiny, dates and figs, complex compressed spices, but all spice, cinnamon, nutmeg, yeah. A little bit of mint, apple mint, and like mint confectionery mint in the development going into a finish with some lemon water, ginger, more sherry notes, more ripe raisin notes and that little burst of heat at the finish from what has been a moderately hot spirit to begin with but has been very successfully reined in by the casks. But to an experienced palate, it's going to be a bit of a shock. And I encourage, if you come across a bottle of whiskey like this, for goodness sake, don't pour it down the sink and have a foot stomping tantrum. That You're only punishing yourself. Put the cork on, put it away, in the cupboard, out of the sunlight, leave it for a few months, come back to it. It will have changed. You will have changed slightly because when you come back to these whisky, your memory kicks in from previous experience and then starts to moderate and modify in its approach towards what's going on. Before I give a malt mark now, I'm going to have a last sip, see if I can tell you a little bit more about it. And I'm going to focus on the sensations because this is something that Billy Walker is really quite good at engineering, of creating the sensation range within the whisky, complementing between the spirit and the cask influence. And that is sweet, sour, salt, bitter and savoury. He's not frightened to allow the bitterness in, but he cushions bitterness frequently with either slight savoury, if it's peated whisky, or with sweetness, if it's a standard version of Glenallachy. Wonderful, rich, almost cough mixture, lozenge, real quality confectionery note, medicinal confectionery. You're getting that sort of bitter syrup lozenge effect. Um, apple juice, gooseberry, banana again. Is banana is it's coming in a, diff, a certain permutation of banana. I would call it sauté banana, slightly overcooked, and a little 
touch of butteriness in it. It's a whiskey which is slow to awaken and as such when we allow it time we will be rewarded but sometimes that time is not a few days, it's not a few weeks what makes, it's a few few months. In this case I've left that bottle open for almost a year uh, and I don't regret. Hey, still there, it's fine, it's ready when I am, it's not going anywhere. A little bit of inert gas in there. Didn't need it. Just didn't need it. Let it oxidise slightly. That's a safe space for oxidisation. It's not a cause for concern until you're halfway down the bottle, particularly at a 15 year old age. 15 years isn't old for a whiskey. Right. Ho oh, hum, tiddly palm. Time for me to dip into the, the jock noodle, noodle tub. You see, I'm recycling my plastic here. I hope you're taking note. <laughs> I'm going to give this a very competent 85 out of 100. It's a malt mark and it's an integrity malt. I recommend it and even more I recommend the 10 year old cask strength and the 12 year old cask strength because when owners take over a distillery sometimes they bring in their head hunted staff members who have considerable experience and it's not just their own experience they're bringing to the operation it is the experience of their team and that is the case at Glen Allachy and I anticipate that the caliber of new make spirit being made at Glen Allachy at the moment far exceeds what has previously been made and therefore this makes this a pretty sound brand to connect with for the foreseeable future. I'll leave it at that. I'm done and dusted here. The malt moment is over. It's been shared. And if you'd like to pop back again for Ralphie Review 900 Extras, I will be telling, I'll be taking you on a crypto journey. Yeah, it's the first. It's the first time it's happened in, this, in the whiskey sphere. A crypto journey with NFTs and their derivatives, etc. It may seem confusing, it may seem a little bit baffling, but I'm going to give you my perspective on it to give you a much clearer view of what it's all about. And I look forward to seeing you with my extras. See you. Bye bye.